Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yes, Paris. I thought I'd do mine on Paris. We'll always have Paris, a famous so uh, line from the film Casablanca, you might, you might know. That film, and I was absolutely delighted to be invited here. You're know, Paris, city of romance, city of love, um, McDonald's, <laughs> and all sorts of other things. I thought, you know, I'm really looking forward to being back in France, but then I thought, what if it's not Paris, France? Because, <laughs> you know, there are 16 Parises in America. That's, you know, isn't that original? What should we call it? Oh, Paris? Yeah. <laughs> so you've got um, Paris, Texas, Paris, Kentucky, Paris, Mississippi, Paris, Alabama, Paris, Missouri. Paris, the other ones I can't remember. And, they were all, and then I thought, well, maybe they want me to go and, you know, not visit Paris, but visit Paris. I thought. <laughs> yeah, and, and that would be nice, because she's renowned, really, for her great intelligence, as, as demonstrated by one of her most famous quotes. I'm not like that smart. I, like, forget stuff all the time. <laughs> so I thought, you know, well, that would be interesting, maybe, or, or, or perhaps not, to go and see Paris. But, of course, Paris, what's it famous for? Who, who wrote this line, I love Paris in the springtime? <laughs> Gershwin. Gershwin. Very famous song, I Love Paris in the Springtime. There it is in all its glory, that the flowers are blooming. There's one of those statues that we don't know who made it or what it's for. <laughs> um, but, you know, interestingly, the second line, the second line of that song is I Love Paris in the Fall. And who could have, you know, when he wrote that, little did he know that in the autumnal smash hit film G.I. Joe, um, the Eiffel Tower would indeed fall. So, and, and, and so very prophetic in many ways. But Paris, of course, what do we think of when we think, what, what, what do I think? I, I live in Spain, you know, when I, I think of Paris, I think of all this fantastic architecture and these beautiful buildings and, like I said, McDonald's and romance and things like that. But perhaps one of the things, walking through the square, I walked up uh, past the Louvre this morning, up through uh, the Champs Elysees, see all this fantastic architecture, this beautiful classical architecture. <laughs> Um, this is a quote about the, the, the guy who designed the, the, the Centre Pompidou. He's very humanistic, I love that. Isn't that? Because that is very humanistic, isn't it, that building? Mm. <laughs> Cosy and um, humanistic. And um, it's not a piece of abstract sculpture at all. Not at all. Uh, but inside those buildings is the politics and the deviousness of France. I think it was Napoleon famously said, secrets travel fast in Paris. And here we have Monsieur Sarkozy there. If you can't read at the bottom, it says, insecurity, dude. You're president of France and your, your wife's smoking hot. Really, it's okay. You don't have to stand on your tiptoes when you need to. <laughs> but of course, the relationship between America and France has famously been very prickly, I think. We're, some of us will remember the Freedom Fries episode mm. yeah, during the Gulf War. But uh, uh, Oscar Wilde reckoned it was all just jealousy. He said that when, when good Americans die, they go to Paris because that's actually really where they want to be. All that whinging about Freedom Fries. Um, we, have, we have a language problem, of course, the Americans, uh, famously, like the British, we're not, we're not renowned for our facility of learning languages. This is Mark Twain. In Paris, I simply stared while I spoke in French. I never did succeed in making those idiots understand their own language. And Steve Martin, boy, those French, they have a different word for everything. Um, now, cuisine, another very France famous for cuisine. Jacques Chirac famously said this about English cuisine. You can't trust people who cook that badly after Finland is the place in the world where you eat the worst. That's Britain. But then, of course, you get the other side, escargot. Probably a couple of French chefs found a snail and one said, I bet if we call them escargot, tourists will eat them. <laughs> and art, another thing, France, very famous for art. You've got your, your Matisses and you've got all these people, these from Monets and Manets and stuff. But can I say, Picasso is Spanish. It's not French. Okay. The Demoiselle d'Avignon is actually written about a street in Barcelona called Avignon Street. It's got nothing to do with Sue Le Pont. Okay, so you can't have him. Um, writers, of course, France has produced some of uh, the most famous writers in the world. There's a lovely quote here. In America, only the successful writer is important. In France, all writers are important. In England, no writer is important. And in Australia, you have to explain what the writer is. Um, and of course, France is famous for its intellectuals, isn't it? The old-style intellectual on the left there, um, squints, smokes cigarettes and haunts the cafes of the Paris left bank. The one on the right there, the newer kind, the flowing hair, the open neck shirt and haunts television studios. Um, and possibly the most famous intellectual in, in the whole of France, I guess, or one of the most famous, would be Jean Paul Sartre. Um, famous for existentialism, which is uh, clearly depicted here in the slide. <laughs> 
famous author of Letre in the Neon, fantastic work of, of, of literature exploring uh, uh, humankind's deepest, darkest nature. And um, Sartre, of course, had a very famous uh, partner for some time. You know, who, who was that? Simone de Beauvoir. Simone de who said one of these two quotes on the screen. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, <laughs> or man is defined as a human being and a woman as a female, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, Simone de Beauvoir, of course, has a bridge named after her, which doesn't happen to everyone. This is the um, Simone de Beauvoir bridge, or whatever it's called. Um, uh, France, of course, we, 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 I must come on to, to, to people, men and women. Um, beautiful little quote there, I like French men very much because even when they insult you, they do it so nicely. Mm -hmm. And women, of course, French women don't get fat. It's a very famous publication, I think, from a couple of years back, which I think is such a great title for a book, isn't it? Is, it, is that true? I don't know, maybe it's true. Um, romance. Very famous, this fantastically famous photo. I think it was Victor Hugo said, when a woman is talking to you, listen to what she says with her eyes. But then, of course, you have to balance it against Serge Gainsbourg, don't you? Je t'aime, je t'aime, oui, je t'aime, moi non plus. You know, there's not much romance in there, I think. And, of course, romance inevitably, or often, leads on to sex. And this is Annie Toulouse, France is the, thr the thriftiest of all nations. To a Frenchman, sex provides the most economical way to have fun. <laughs> and George Mikes, who famously said, continental people have sex lives, the English have hot water bottles. <laughs> But I just want to let you down a little bit. The We'll Always Have Paris never happened in the film Casablanca. And if you've seen it, if you, if you have looked very, very closely at that film, you would see that it's not We'll Always Have Paris. It's in fact We'll Always Have Paris. Thank you very much.